to now address you all as the last male poet in the Nietzschean sense, if you're a male poet, I'm kind of offended by that, but we all know, we all know uh, the truth. And uh, <laughs> so I have some unreleased poems as well as some uh, released poems. And uh, yeah, I shall start with some from the book, which is available, signed by me for $20, or you could choose to not have it signed, that very messy writing, which will be worth more. Only time will tell. Uh, but I'll start with uh, this one, which is one of the first poems I wrote after a long hiatus from poetry. Poetry belongs to the men who eat at gas stations for only they have saved time enough to admire the beauty of the world unadorned. Why do firecrackers make dogs so scared? You were fine being loud as hell a minute ago. Double fudge, triple ripple, sea salt toffee, Extra brittle, sour skittle, paradiddle, Mickey Mouse gingerbread, tea house covered in burnt molasses in Calabasas by an asthmatic taking acrobat classes. These are all different poems, by the way. I do short poems, but uh, it'll interrupt too much if it's applause, you know? <laughs> But if one's like really good, you should like cheer. <laughs> that way I'll know. Shorty smell like old wet pennies. Shorty always drinking henny. Shorty know the birth signs of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Shorty did the animation on Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Shorty got poodles named Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Shorty fed them shits dry spaghetti. Shorty ball like Wario. Shitty. That's right, Ted. Thank you for not wearing the fedora, by the way. <laughs> Flea markets used to be the spot for guys who wore yellow raincoats when the sun was shining. Popcorn smell from 10 feet away. Selling stamps wrapped in cellophane or stacks of National Geographic. Stuff nobody gave a shit about. Now it's tie-dye Nike shirts and Mexican blankets. Nobody wants that shit either. <laughs> Because Ted's here, this one's his favorite. Thank you. <clears throat> the only one my dad likes because he hates poetry. <laughs> but no, I won't say, fuck you, dad. But if your dad's an asshole, fuck you. Your dad. My dad was very good. Shout out to him. A little cold, maybe, but uh, He never kissed me on the lips enough. <clears throat> Once there was a peasant and he was the hardest working peasant in the whole village. Every day he was out on the farm, working as hard as he could, but he wasn't making enough money. So he decided, I'll go talk to the richest man in town. And he bade his wife farewell, put on his wooden shoes, went down the lane, and soon enough he found the rich man. The peasant asked, Sir, I work so hard every day. I ask your advice. How can I be rich like you? The rich man laughed. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and he said, if hard work brought riches, 
then the mule would be laden with gold. Hmm, the peasant said, and went home. What did he say? <laughs> His beautiful wife asked him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Something about having a big ass. <laughs> yeah, you got sound for that. For sale, Rick and Morty shirt. Never washed. Chris <laughs> <laughs> Hemingway. Yeah. I see. I see. Very good. Very good. Very good. As life goes by, year after year, one could worry or somehow fear. Down in Hades, they'll come to dwell, amongst a vile Satan or king of hell. In time enough, all conversation is stretched. This is true, even among the wretched. And hell's own king may come to ask, why on earth did you dwell in sorrow, paying today when the loan's due tomorrow? If time is in God, and God is in time. Sleep has his house, history's backbone. The rose has his spine. They're not all funny, it's poetry. <laughs> <laughs> <It's serious shit. laughs> ah, one of my favorite romantic poems. <laughs> a notebook is where a man may hide, thoughts away from prying eyes. Secrets of his soul disguised. Oh, it's too theater kid. As screed and scribed and scrawled inside, chicken scratched with timid pride. Big booty dump truck, ass bonanza. Like her name was George Costanza. Black tar jive. Some people live in cars. Some people live in vans. Some people live in Shangri-Las or dry Afghanistan, where they have so many caves. But now as for me, you ask? Me, I live among the waves, the crashing, roiling, foaming surf, as it swirls into a cone, pretending that I'm someone else, not shooting China white alone. It's a type of arrow. <laughs> Who's defined the right or wrong in how we spend and why? But I shall make an effort here on candor, I'll rely. Explain it all, the bad, the good, and not a bit to cry. For gambling is a gift from God. His love shines when you win. If you lose, you are a Calvinist. It was because of sin. A baby could drive before it walked if you stacked enough phone books for its feet to reach. So that's a. Uh, we'll take a break from the book, but don't worry, there's plenty of time I can. Uh, somewhat of a ham I can read all night, but I'll read you some unreleased poems. If you think that's a good idea. Is it a good idea? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get some applause. We haven't had any applause. Yeah. All right. This one I wrote today. It's called Brant. It's for Brant. Everyone, all the ladies and gentlemen, uh, my handler and the architect of male poetry in Toronto, Brant. Yeah. Let's, let's bring it up. I promise you, <laughs> I would never come back to Toronto. If not, not for him doing this. But I've changed my mind. You guys are over it. You guys are way half. You're half. And this is a story about when Brant got this idea. And uh, Jackie will know Spa Boy. Oh, shout out again. Oh, we have to shout out. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to shout out Soup Soup. Everyone tells me. Soup, you're at Soup Soup? This is the greatest 
It's the greatest store. Isn't it, people? Isn't it? Yes. Ten years. Ten years they've been here. Yeah. Amazing. We love it. And uh, Spa Boy, how can we forget Spa Boy? 100% so chalk. Aren't they fantastic? Oh, aren't they so tall in there? Everyone's tall there. I know they asked you to play basketball. That's what I think every time I go inside. They didn't ask me, but you guys, you guys, I know they did. So anyhow, Brant in poem form. It's going great, he texted me. Great, I texted. I only sell them to books, to hot girls. <laughs> oh no, I texted. Yeah, there were like five guys with money. I didn't let them. Bye. All right, I texted. I met up with Bran and saw the book in possession of a hot girl. <laughs> Wow, it's awesome she bought it, I said. Oh, she didn't buy it. I gave it to her. <laughs> Why, I asked. Because she was a hot girl. <laughs> Internally, I questioned Brant's business acumen. <laughs> what Brant didn't know is that you, all of you, are hot girls. <laughs> Even the guys. Even if you have to tie a bone around your neck to get a dog to play fetch with you. All of my fans, in my eyes, are hot girls. And here tonight, in this room, filled with verse and eros and connection and language and milk and honey. Shout out Rupi Kaur, greatest poet alive. Serious. Hot girls all pay twenty dollars, <laughs> and we have more books. Snap it up, Brand. Thank you, Brand. I love you deeply. Uh, here's another one. One more. One second. One second. <clears throat> Gifted Child Film Society. It was called that 40 years ago. The namesake being the precocious offspring of the treasurer of the local college. The take-home toddler intelligence test said the youth possessed a mind of seven Einsteins. He was tragically run over by a train because he enjoyed most of all Licking the railroad tracks. <laughs> HBO show. So these are these are trial ones. They're not, they're not all good folks. They're not all dingers. Let me know if it's like a bad one. Go like boo. <laughs> HBO show where Kafka is actually super excited about becoming the Semitic Charles Dickens. <laughs> But then his buddy that discovers him, kills him. It's called Every Contract with the Corporate Library Industry. They also do some fuck shit to Melville with IPE's rollout to Q Season 2 starring Vince Vaughn. Your dad's a scarecrow master, lives for disaster. He tried to find, looked inside his own brain, but it's dead inside. Don't wait for me, sister. Just watch the nuclear bombs. I thought it was <laughs> Oh, this is one I don't remember writing about my friend uh, Iggy. I apparently I was talking to one of Iggy's friends. I was so drunk I didn't remember it, but I think she said something along the line, you're not a poet, you're just 
just a stinky old guy. So I proved it wrong. <laughs> Debra, that's an old person name, but. <laughs> Debra, a poem for you. Flowers in wind, flax in your hair, blueberry streaks. Iggy hates all my poems. For you, this could take me weeks. Your beauty is real, and for you, my heart opens doors, but to live in the physical Cupid abhors. Your patience is pristine and finer than gold. Word priceless and glee, they make me feel old. When I was a young rapscallion, I'd rob and I'd cuss and practice my kissing with boys on the bus. <laughs> but you met me so warmly in secrets you told, forcing me like toffee to get sweet as I'm old. <laughs> Drunk Nate wrote this one is the note I made. So. Oh, here we go. <laughs> boo, come on, boo you. What the hell have you ever done? Oh, I had a noise set. I twisted some noise. <laughs> oh, no, no. We love the Toronto Noise Boys. Uh, Ted. I thought Ted was in this cool band. Yeah, Hot Girls. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> noise Boys. <laughs> they get the Hot Girls. Like they know any part. But, uh, all right. Gen X. Because uh, this is for Julie, who only dates Gen X guys. <laughs> Sorry, Julie. <laughs> Your secret's <Next> out. <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah. Prior to the internet, the most technical. Let's restart that. Prior to the internet, the most technologically advanced concept Gen X could handle was that you could try and build a time machine in your garage. All other brain power was dedicated to adult-oriented comic books <laughs> and VHS pornography. More love phones. More criticism. <laughs> it's, this one's fresh. Oh, I'm just gonna hear it and kick the shit out of me. You don't write love poems. She said, it's all dogs and barf and bile. I was drunk, so I brought up the song she wrote, calling me a big fat titty bitch boy. It's true. And then I fell down her stairs. Love poems are allowed to have dog barf. And love songs often go. Little bitch boy with the big fat titties. <laughs> Our love is that of friends. So come talk to me after the reading. We can totally have sex. <laughs> They're all, everyone, everyone. Can you, can you believe it? I can't. Prove it. <laughs> yeah, you proved it. Look, look to your left, look to your right. What did you see? I thought so. Stained glass with the cool eyeballs. We went to the Russian spa in the back of a strip mall. It was cool, I recommend. Yo fam, how did you know I'm from Toronto? <laughs> he asked me, confused. A good guess. That's the coolest thing I've seen come out of the six. A whole new dialect. That and the boy. Drizzy Drake. The coolest thing. Other cool things have come out, but. Yo fam, everybody. Everybody, <laughs> I'll get in trouble. But it's cool. Alright, ah, boo yourself. I gotta practice it. Next one, next reading. Um, yeah. And he was, no, he's good. He was, I met him in Montreal. That's cool. Drake? Yeah, good idea. Um, thanks for listening to the test out once. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, some of those, <laughs> some of those might get erased. Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll see. Oh, a classic. <laughs> Big dog and bouncing. OG boom boom bazooka bong breakfast bark. Sparking up Chicago. Put the doggy down in Cape Town. Always barking off that Birkin bag to Biggie Bone. Peter Barker, Bacali Balkan, Bombay Battle Zone. Big dogs are gonna bow wow barking. Big barking like Ricky Martin. Biting bow wow, biodomer, but we Steve Harvey barfing. <laughs> I think that's enough because uh, I'm not going to read you the whole book. Except, I'll read you one more. Oh no, did the page on the Good gracious. Oh, there's. No, no, no. That's got to be it. There we are. One more. Because you're here, thank you for supporting male poetry. Please buy a book. <laughs> We're very much in the red still. Uh, not your fault, Brandon. Not your fault. <laughs> God's Leopard. <laughs> Way on back through the smoky sands of time, just past the baobab trees where those desert dunes shine purple in the twilight, there was a leopard who languished within an oasis lagoon and thought of how many angels could come to dance on the head of a pin. He thought so long and hard that God called the leopard home. And gave him a place of destiny amongst the stars. That's God's leopard, the sailors would exclaim. I watched a cat pounce on a piece of fried chicken as soon as it fell from my fingers. Fuck it. He must have thought. God already picked his leopard anyways. Thank you. There will be more of these. It's uh we'll be done. There's books for sale. <laughs> Have a great night. There's wine. Drink, up, drink the wine, please. Please.